to uh, welcome here Catherine Perez Shakdam. Thank you very much for coming. Thank uh, you here in person, not on remote uh, interview. Uh, and we're going to talk about Iran mostly. Uh, can the Iranian regime afford not to react after what happened in Damascus? This is not a question of whether or not they can afford to not retaliate. I think it's a matter of um, being able to, to, to win something. Uh, and, I, and I think that Khamenei's regime is so very terrified. They, they're sitting on the, at the very edge of a cliff. They can't afford to lose anything. They can't afford to make a mistake. Um, they are hated within. Uh, they can't afford to lose any more IHDC, uh, whether they are officers or, or soldiers on the ground. They can't afford to lose anymore uh, because they can't replace them. So there's a very difficult choice. And, and I think that they're starting to understand that they, they stepped outside um, not the comfort zone, but they, they really drew outside the line when they, the way that the, they encouraged Hamas to attack Israel on October 7th. And they did not, I think, expect the, the level of retaliation and the way that the government and the Israeli and the diaspora, the Jewish diaspora in general, was going to react and how we united. Whether people agree on politics is, is beside the point, is that the Jewish people are one. And this terrified the regime in Iran. They understand that when we're together, there's nothing that could actually touch us or harm us and that we will move as one. And they can't do this. So it's not a question of can they or should they, it's that they, they technically cannot. And also, um, I don't think that Israel is, is uh, the immediate target of the regime. I think that the regime is trying to lock Saudi Arabia out uh, geographically, as well as Israel. And in order to do this, they need to attack Jordan. And Jordan is very much the target, which I think we actually stopped by targeting the IJC commander in Syria. And I think that they understand that the message was very clear, that we know exactly what they're up to, what they're doing, what they want to achieve, and that we, they're going to be stopped at every corner, every step of the way. So, so if how, anything, how they are Jordan scared. The target? Jordan is the Hashemite kingdom. So from a very Shia theological perspective, it has to fall in order for the RSGC, the regime in Iran, to be able to geographically create this, this one corridor, to be able to link the entire region, to lock Israel out, and to lock Saudi out and to isolate the kingdom. You need to understand that this is, this is a battle that has, it's a form of colonialism, a theological colonialism. They're trying to rebrand the region to their colors. And they have already rebranded Shia Islam. They're trying to do this with Sunni Islam. If you look at the way that things have happened. Arab blood has been spilled in the street. Not Iranian blood, not RHGC blood, Arab blood. And the problem is the Arab streets, the Arab capitals are not realizing that they actually are being colonized by the RHGC. Syria was taken over, Yemen was taken over, Iraq was taken over, Lebanon was taken over. To a greater extent, Palestinians' identity was actually, they were branded by the RHGC and they're playing Hamas's game, dying for Hamas, for the RHGC. If anything, I would say that the streets need to wake up and understand that Israel is not the enemy, the Jews are not the enemy. If anything, we are the solution. We already, you know, decolonize ourselves. You know, we reclaim our territory, we decolonize ourselves mentally, psychologically. Um, we own ourselves and our identity and our history. They do not. And maybe it is time for them to wake up. We're coming to Passover. And I say, let my people go. And in that case, maybe they need to let their people go and understand that the real enemy is sitting in Tehran, not in Israel. If the uh, American grand plan uh, mm -hmm. really goes into effect and happens, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia and normalization and all of that, um, where would, would that leave Iran? Well, it would leave Iran somewhere as long as the regime is, is, is out and gone and, and disappeared. The, the regime is this, you know, this construct that is essentially an enactment of slavery. It owns people, it wants to brand people to a very particular ideology, leaving no room for innovation, no room for freedom, no room for people to grow and move and change their mind. This is, this is a dead regime in the sense that you cannot, it does not accept life, in, in the sense that you can't have innovation, people cannot thrive, they cannot grow, they cannot travel out of the country, they cannot you know, even change their religion and change their mind. This is, this is a very antiquated way of living. This is feudalism at its very worst. It's the negation of humanity, it's nihilism, um, <clears throat> and it cannot stand, and it, it will run out its courts. I mean, we, we have seen, you know, in history, ideology fall and rise, and this one will fall. Um, unfortunately, I think, for the Iranian people, um, they, they're going to need to make it fall a lot faster um, because they're prolonging the enslavement, and at some point something has to give, but it needs to come from within. We can't help them. They have to help themselves and understand, and I would say the same thing for, for the entire region. They need to understand that while they're hating us, 
they're actually playing the game of the puppeteers in, in, in Tehran, not understanding, but hating us is the easy way because this is something that they know so well. But actually, while they're doing so, they're not hating the right people. They're not hating the right enemy. And I want them to get angry. It's just not at us because we don't want anything from them. They need something from us because we've already done the work. So my, my advice to them and my encouragement to them is just understand that the enemies in Tehran wake up and actually, if, if not for yourself, for your children. Because who are you as a parent? Who are you as a person? If you cannot actually want something better for your child, the notion of martyrdom is, is the negation of, 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 of being a parent. If you're a mother or a father, why would you want your child to suffer for what? So you could achieve something? And who is there to verify it? Nobody. So I'd rather, I'd rather live a good life and actually stand for the truth. All right, Catherine, thank you very much. You're welcome.